Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee. This is uh, Reefer Explained. Today we're going to be doing a quick look at the tank um, and just talking about um, backup equipment that you might need for your reef that you may not thought about. So um, the three things mostly that I'll worry about is a backup heater, a backup ATO, because I don't want to be topping up by hand if I'm away from the tank or out on town for business so if the ato breaks or the lens um the eye whatever you want to call it then obviously realistically you need a backup for it and a return pump wave makers yes you should have some kind of uh, backup wave maker or at least the impeller to replace it um but the return pump the heater and the ato really um freaked me out a little bit so most people won't think about this and uh it's something if a heater breaks and it's cold at the time it's winter time you're going to need a new heater uh pretty quick and waiting a few days from your local uh favorite place that you order stuff from your lfs store is going to be a nightmare unless you go down to there and pick one up but it could be late in the evening and then you've got 12 hours of no heater on the tank so uh my my personal opinion is to have these things on stock on hand heaters generally unless you're buying titanium expensive heaters they're around 30 pounds and it's not not a big deal to have one on hand now i get it that if you have an expensive return pump for instance that's you know two or three hundred pounds then obviously it might be a bit of a crunch but realistically if you're going to be having the tank up for two or three four years then another return pump on the side and atos are pretty cheap these days between 70 and 100 pounds depending on what model you buy so i bought one of those as a backup and i may use it when i'm away on holiday to back up the ato that might not be enough just in case you get stuck there for a few more days or you extend your holiday so nothing worse than that so we're diving right into what we're talking about today is a return pump um, it's just something that happened to me when I went away on holiday. The return pump failed, came up with an error. Now it is a Jacob 4,000 liters per hour, uh, Chinese brand. But uh, to be to be honest with you, this this pump is uh, this is a replacement of the other one that failed. And even though I did get it started back when I was actually away on holiday, I got someone to come in, reset the system. There was a I think there was a power cut or something that tripped it and or it didn't trip sorry it wasn't anything to do with the pump itself but there was a power cut i think in the area and then obviously the return pump didn't come back on it said error so it wouldn't fill up the main display and when i checked the camera from abroad i could see that the level was too low inside the main display because the heaters inside the the main heater for this is was in the sump obviously it wasn't um sending heat back upstairs and yeah so the temperature dropped i got a, an alert from a reef factory uh which is my thermal view uh this is the thermal control thermal views on the top um, thermal control will basically plug in your heater and your fan and you'll be able to control the heat and cooling from there the thermal view is just a viewing simple same display kind of thing is in red but it will just give you that indication and they've both got alarms on them um, I got the thermal view before I bought the thermal control, so I've just left it on there as a as a backup. Um, so I can see one on the front of the the tank up above, and one down here. This one is way too bright to have outside the tank. It just lights up and glares your eyes out. So the other one is a bit more subtle. It's just red uh, numbers. Um, so we're going back to return pump on this. The the Jacob four thousand liters per hour. Uh, they sent me another one um, because it had a fault or something went wrong with it, I don't know. But it's super quiet, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to show you quickly, I'm going to turn off some of this equipment, skimmer first, you're going to hear how quiet this is. Now I'm going to turn off the reactor, which is to the right, the white thing, it's a TMC, hums a little bit. And we're going to unplug the pump for the UV, which hums on the back, which is the 350 Eheim here. So now I've unplugged this, you can barely hear the the return pump. It's so quiet. There's a little bit of trickling just from the um, Red Sea roller mat. But yeah, if you want a quiet pump, guys, uh, the Jacob line, um, the DC ones obviously are super quiet and super reliable. I think I had that one for about a year and a half before anything happened to it. And it was just my luck when I went away that something got triggered. 
um, and obviously cause a fault. It did go back online from someone coming in my house and turning it all back on and restarting it. But um, I think as I go on, a lot of these things now are all automated on the system. So for instance, the roller mat will give me auto, auto uh, will give me updates um, when the roll is about to finish. It will tell me if there's a jam. Um, I can check that it's online. The same with the lights above the Red Sea Reef uh, LED 90s. I can see the plan for them. Uh, I can see the uh, Red Sea Red Sea Reef Wave 25. I can see that that's on on the system. I can see my ATOs on. I've got some cameras on here. The only things I'm not fussed about is the protein skimmer, which has got a float valve built into the max spec. So that's uh, really cool. So that will turn itself off if there's any problems with the sump filling up. Um, and obviously I've got the thermal control and view so I can see the heat when I'm away. And I've got a backup temperature gauge that I can turn on with a Wi-Fi plug, which there is a heater now in the rear of the display. Um, which I can set to come on if I if for some reason the sump was to drain down Then and the return pump wants it kicking on then I can control heat in there as well now And that's one thing I didn't think about when I was away That if the sump was to drain and not come back on Would there be heat going to the tank? Well, there's not because the heater is down here um, You should never put it in the return chamber just in case that the pump drains out the water So it's always down here and it's quite low down um, and it, I've never had a problem with it here, but only that one time. So now there's a backup heater in there and I'll get an alert for the temperature via refactory. So I'm going on a little bit. Uh, the backup heat, the backup um, return pump is this one here. It's a 3500 DC, it's Jacob. Um, it's a newly designed one. So it's got a new front panel for the display. Uh, Wi-Fi con controllability, you're not going to even touch that when you're away, but it will be handy to see that everything is running at the normal speeds. Um, it's got a 3.5 meter head height, 3,500 liters, 28 watts. I need to check what the old one was. I think this will be less because the other one was 4,000 liters, so obviously it's going to be drawing less power. Um, as it's newer, um, it should be good. It's got a newly designed, so it's not all black. I don't know if that's a good thing. Maybe it'll get look more dirty, but as it comes out of the box, it looks pretty sweet. Um, it's really well built. Um, you can see all the mechanics inside, all the, the kind of shaft where, where everything turns around. It's got this little cap on to protect it like the other one does. And then you've got the power brick and everything else in here. Um, yeah, it's great for what it is. I think the other one, the Jacob 4000 was about 90 pounds. And this I think was about 138, but it's worth it with a Wi-Fi, newly designed. Uh, you can see if anything's jammed in there because it's clear. So I like that. So if there was any, I don't know, like algae or something, some sort of snail, you could probably see in there if you lifted it out. You get the plug. Um, it's a, yeah, it's just a UK three three pin plug. I thought maybe it was uh, had had options to change out the things. You get the O-ring. Um, and then the, the adapters, and there's a few in here that you can choose from, I believe. Let me just pull these out. Yeah, there is a few in here. So you've got a few options in here, um, and uh, it all looks really nicely put together. Um, I'm gonna put this on, I think, at some point shortly, um, just because I wanna get, get this up and running. And then I'll, I'll use the 4,000 liters per hour one there as a backup uh, for this one. So I think it's a good idea, and um, I think I've made a good, good, good purchase here because it's something that I would need to buy if the other one broke anyway. And it means I put this brand new one in, and I've got the other one for spare because it's still working like a gem. Um, just get a little booklet, little user booklet. Look them up. I think Reef Dork did a review on this um, online. He's got two of them running, which is a, another good. Thing to do but I don't have enough room in my chamber really to run the two with uh, my, some media in there I've got some other stuff in there I've got the uh, I've got the return the ATO and I've got the little pump for the Eheim so really me running two on this um, it's just not really doable um, and I'm just not that great at kind of setting these things up in the first place so 
yeah, if you want to return pump, you want something quiet, um, I'll let you know how quiet this one is, but I can't see this being a problem. The other one is so quiet. And if it's not quiet when I set it up, to be honest with you, I'm going to... I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to send it back to the manufacturer and then get my refund because there's nothing worse than a loud pump and I'm just not not prepared to go through that to have that humming noise it's frustrating so guys if you like the video today I've rabbit on a little bit but uh, get yourself a return pump a backup get yourself a return uh, a, a heater backup and get yourself a ATO as a backup you can get yourself a wave maker, get a cheap one for like 20 pounds just to turn over the water. Obviously, if you've got a massive tank, you've got SPS, you're going to need a backup a gyro or something or an MP10, whatever you're using, MP40s uh, as a backup as well. They do uh, replacement dry sides for those, the MP10s, MP40s. Um, and yeah, I may be looking at getting a backup for the Red Sea 25. I've only had it running for around eight months on here. It's doing really well. Uh, I love it. It's good for this tank for flow. Got it set at 60% and I just leave it there really. And it's doing really well with the LPS. Um, and got the, everything is, is pretty much uh, bombing, doing pretty well. Uh, I just need some more SPS at the top. I've only got a couple of sticks there. And yeah, loving the Gonies and Alvies still. Uh, let me know what you think. If you like the tank, you like the sump. Uh, any questions you have about the tank itself, hit me up and I'll share. Thanks for watching. Bye.